A very good afternoon to you. And I hope that through today's presentation, we can each um, share our experience and learn from one another. All right, so that's the topic, a very long name, and hopefully through the process, we can see uh, it clearer, how we're going to decrease the resistance of mandated Chinese client. So for our group, we, it is given a name called Bet on Freedom, which I'll explain why do we use the name Bet on Freedom. So this program actually has uh, six sessions in total, and each session, that's one hour. So a total of six sessions, one hour each. So we are gonna see what are the rationales behind the program and the program design, how the design comes about, and the contents, what's in the program itself, and client's feedback. We managed to collect um, 19 of them over the one year period of the client's feedback. And at the end, we have a question and answer. Hopefully, I can answer your questions. If not, I'll, I've got a lot of supporters here that will help me out. <laughs> All right, so let's just take a look at the rationale of the program. Okay, first, we use a group program versus individual for the Chinese client. Reason being that, you know, um, going to counseling is quite a something that is quite stigmatizing. For them, it's like, you know, you have a huge problem or you're sick or you're not well because they may e equate counselling to seeing a doctor. So, but in, in a big group, that kind of helped them to destigmatize, help them to see that, hey, you know, everybody, all of us have the same problem. And they will see that actually it's um, more than myself. And the group has uh, the other dimension is that they can hear out from other participants. So as facilitators, it's actually an easier job in that sense. We do not have to tell them that, you know, you have a problem, but a lot of time they are actually being um, told or, or being questioned by other participants. Okay, and psychoeducation versus conventional counselling. Yeah, for Chinese, um, most of the Chinese do not have a good idea what counselling is about. So to them, going for counselling is quite a petrifying kind of experience. So, uh, but psychoeducation, because for Chinese, education is very important. Gaining knowledge is very important. So for them to attend a group as an education, they are actually more open and, um, and therefore, you know, decreasing the resistance of coming. <laughs> I need to take a deep breath. All right. We also use multiple models and mediums because we have groups that is quite a mixed, you know, mixed age and mixed background. We have people that works in the restaurant and we also have people who are actually like remiser. We have people that has um, own educational institution. So you, you have a very mixed group of people. So you using um, multiple models actually as to kind of cater from, for different needs and using different mediums because we know that people learn differently. Some people like visual, some people like, you know, um, more on tactile. So we have different types of mediums as well to cater for different needs. And of course, short term versus long term because with a short term kind of program, they are more committed. We hardly see any drop out from the program. Once they started, they actually end with the program. So meaning that, you know, when they start with session one, they finished up to session, session six, which helps us to capture the data, which also helped us to see the progress. And there's a special thing about this program because we kind of target at the first time um, re-entry application because there's a rationale behind it is that, you know, for them, they are more open. Probably they have not known of you know, a, a better way of managing uh, problem gambling in that sense, and therefore, you know, uh, they are open to learn about what they can help themselves to prevent harm in the future. So all this rationales, you know, I have to uh, put a, a disclaimer there because it's based on the knowledge that I've worked with the Chinese clients in New Zealand. Hopefully it can ap apply across mm -hmm. the board, and I hope that 
who knows if I get a chance to go back to Singapore to test it out with them and then bring it back and then say that you know, it's internationally <laughs> recommended. Okay, as for the program design, there are some assumptions. <clears throat> First of all, clients are assumed to have encountered with some gambling issues when they apply for self-exclusion. May it be they spend too much time in the casino or in, in the gaming venues, or may it be they have spent too much money that caused them to apply for self-exclusion, or may it be a family member that has actually encouraged them to do so. So there must be some issues involved when they take the self-exclusion. And then, based on the uh, model of change, okay, so we just presume that they come in from the pre-contemplative uh, pre stage, right? We wouldn't know, but for this program, we just want to do that to, so that from the design itself, moving people from pre-contemplative stage to contemplative and then eventually a preparation stage for change. And <clears throat> a lot of a lot of the program actually behind is the spirit of motivational interviewing because we want to promote change. We are not going to say that no, they will definitely not go back to gambling, but we want to see change in terms of like, you know, shifting their thinking about what gambling is about and identifying uh, whether they have a problem gambling and changing their gambling behavior. So, so the goals. Okay, we want clients to gain awareness of gambling harm. That's number one. And the second one is that we want them to start thinking about there's a need for change. And the third is clients to gain coping techniques and also planning skills to prevent future gambling harm. So this is the stages of change. So uh, what I was talking about, the pre-contemplative stage that they came in, they don't have any intention on changing behavior. Actually, um, when we did the PCOMs with them, a lot of them, they just put 10. You know, they are very good, nothing is wrong with them. Yeah, and hence, that gives us an idea that, hey, these are the people who think that, you know, it's all right to go back to gamble and they don't have an issue. Therefore, putting them at the pre-contemplative stage. And therefore, they don't have an, any intention to change. They just want to come to seek the, seek the six hours of counselling so that they can get a letter and re-enter into the casino. So in their mind, basically that's what they want to do. They just want to use up the six hours, whatever you say, whatever you do, you know, I, I just want to get the letter to enter the casino. Yeah, so they don't have the intention to change. <clears throat> right, and so we want to move them around the site cycle and a lot of time I told my colleagues that you know do not put too much hope because this is a short-term program which uh, probably we can see them until the preparation stage so for the action stage it will be our follow-up calls that we make to see whether they really take action yeah so the program design is uh, broken into three stages the first stage is the pre-contemplation. So we see that the feature is that they don't have any intention on changing the behavior. And therefore, you know, for this stage, the suggestion is to provide information. And at contemplation stage, what is uh, needed is that they need to be aware that there's a problem that exists. And, but at that point of time, they still do not know whether they want to change or not want to change. So, the suggested intervention for them is to elicit the discrepancy, to help them see that, hey, you know, this is what you think, but what's the reality for them to make the decision. And the last stage for the program is preparation, which um, that's the time that they start thinking that I want to do something. So what are the things that they can do? Hence, we provide some coping and managing uh, healthy lifestyle skills for them to consider, and some of them really take the suggestions quite well. All right. The content, for the pre-contemplation stage, so we want to provide gambling harm information. Okay. The first session we use uh, IDT for introduction. IDT is interactive drawing therapy, yeah. The reason for using IDT is that 
we want to give the ownership back to the client. And it's also not so threatening because when you ask them to draw, we just say that draw whatever that represents you so they can choose, they can make the choice, you know, what they want to reveal to the group. So in a way, it's not like we are pushing them, no. So it's a very, very uh, open kind of concept for them to introduce themselves. We also explore in depth of the group name, which is Bad of Freedom. So the name is chosen because bad, you know, gambling. You have the bad. So that makes an, a connection with them. And also, um, what's involved in betting? So a lot of time, they'll say that uh, time, money, and all of that. So that helps them to think that, you know, when I go gambling, I mean, I'm actually using time and money to bet. So if I have the time and money, what should I be putting on <coughs> besides gambling? So, you know, just at the start of the program, we make them start thinking about it. And I have a client that actually said that his aunt bet on her life because the aunt basically died because of gambling. Yeah, she died <laughs> because of um, you know, being ill after uh, long years of gambling. So that's how we help them to start thinking about what do they want to do with their gambling behavior. And session two, we actually provide information on um, gambling, the etiology probably. Yeah, so we use material like that, you know. Very simple ones. So the group is actually seated in a circle. The facilitators actually sit with the participants. That is to say that we are unequal. Yeah, because we do not want to see that we come in as uh, a power higher or whatever. So we use charts like that, you know, so that we can be closer to them rather than uh, OHP. And we also show a video, a, a Mandarin video, on a famous person that they can recognize, they can identify with, yeah, talking about how you know, their, their lives have been affected psychologically, financially, and also with their family because of gambling. So that is to start the participants thinking about, what about me when I'm gambling? Does this happen to me? To me? <clears throat> okay, so the second stage, contemplation. So we, we are trying to find out what are the things that they will be able to see that there, there are discrepancies, you know, between their, what they are saying that they don't have a problem and the reality. So we actually put them through an exercise of the effects of gambling. Basically, it's kind of like a... Just a concentric circle like that. So we'll just put, this is war, means I, the person in the, in the center. And then we put some suggestive word like, you know, your physical body, mental, and all this. So we just ask them to put, you know, the things that's most affected closer to you. So what would they rate, the priority, what are the priorities? Yeah, you can see from it, like, you'll be surprised that, you know, Chinese don't put family <laughs> closer to them. They put health. And therefore, that's the reason why that the, the medical model actually struck them a lot. A lot of them, they can recall the medical model very well and say that, okay, I have to do something about it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all this kind of like, you know, and budgeting and all that um, is to help them to see that where they are. And <clears throat> we, in fact, we ask them to rate themselves that, you know, before you take your self-exclusion, where would you put in the continuum? This is actually the continuum. So I, I say that this is like a thermometer, you know, that you measure how well you are, you know, when you're gambling. And um, one of the students, before he sat into my session, he said that, will they be honest? And after the session, he was very surprised because many of them actually put themselves at the orange or the red part. So in a way that it's, it's helping them to make a decision, you know, to face to the reality what they are facing when they are gambling. Okay, the last stage. <laughs> okay, so the preparation stage. So um, we teach them coping, coping techniques like emotional freedom techniques and also deep breathing and progressive muscle relaxation. And the last session, we actually just help them with some skills of setting limits and action plan for lapses. 
I think one of the things that I want to highlight in this last session is we, we, they, are, they quite like this gambling and gamble-free diaries. Gambling diaries basically helping them to write down what they have lost, what they have won each session. They just jot down, it's like an accounting paper, you know. And then gamble-free is you know, something they can set for themselves. If let's say you know, a whole week they do not gamble, or seven days they do, do not gamble, they can reward themselves with something good. So that's to balance up, you know, uh, when they are not gambling, they have to be rewarded. Okay, this is <clears throat> the feedback that we get. We, I just want to highlight this part of the information that we have provided, whether they have actually uh, um, get anything from it. So this is the result. So the pink one is very little. You see that there are two bars in each question. So um, the, the first question is about the brain functioning. And you see the pink one is actually, before the session, is very little. Uh, the orange is little. The light blue is sufficient. And light green is much. And dark green is very much. So you can see that from the fit, feedback, most of them actually have gained knowledge. Yep. In, in fact, I can say that 100% of them actually have gained knowledge over the time through the program. So 18 out of 19 say that definitely they will use the knowledge and the skills and only one indicator, maybe. All right, so these are some of the Chinese okay, uh, feedback that our clients give us. He's saying that you know, um, visually it's very uh, stimulating, okay, and it leaves a very deep impression. It's very, very easy to communicate. Okay, I have learned a lot about gambling. Thank you for the educators' uh, warmth. And <laughs> yeah, and they, they wrote, yeah, even my uh, team leader, Wen Li, she was shocked. Oh, they really wrote something? I said, yes, they do. Yeah, so it's a lot more that, you know, so all of them are uh, positive feedback. All right. Um, so how many minutes do I have? <laughs> Oh, good, because, wonderful, okay, because I want to show you uh, what, one or two of the clients' drawing. Then you can see that um, inter interactive drawing therapy can show the result. Okay, I may, may need a technical help here to project this. Okay, what I want to show you is actually the drawings, you know, throughout the six sessions. And we actually asked them to draw one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end. And you can see the progress even through the drawing. It's quite interesting. Okay. okay. So this is the first drawing of this clan A. So we ask her, uh, we asked them to draw as a group, just draw whatever you want to represent you. And she started on the right-hand side, you know, just some pictures. She, she, she said that when she's like bored, she would just draw. And slowly, it develops words. So, you know, how, how do you feel when you're drawing that? So she started to put down, you know, relax. She started to put down happy. And, you know, I can do what I want, I'm free. So this is a lady who has self-excluded for two years and she was applying for the self-exclusion, therefore, in the program. So you can see that, you know, after stopping gambling for two years, you know, um, she's kind of like... Okay, this is second drawing. In relation to gambling, you know, just, just draw something that you, gambling is to you, and that's the drawing that she said that gambling actually has brought you know, unhappiness to her. It's like a storm. Okay, the last one. Okay. Hopefully I'm doing good. Okay. So the last one, you know, this is a drawing. Say, what, what do you, you want your future to look like? Or draw a relaxed place that you can, um, you feel relaxed. So she drew this. And guess where's Casino? Casino is in the big ocean that she said that I'm in this boat very secure. Okay, this is actually a boat. Okay, so this is casino. Oh, sorry, this is casino, this fish. And it, it says that I can do without it. So as long as I don't fish, you know, I'm, I'm secure in the boat. 
and I can do without it. So you can see that you know, through the program, uh, they have progressed even through the drawing, you can tell. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, do we have questions from the audience? <laughs> yeah. Is that the one that you used in the prisons as well? No. No, so this is so it's quite different. Community? Yes, those who apply for uh, self of exclusion. Ah, yeah. Okay. So these are mandated clients? Yes, in a way, yeah. So these are these are people who have self-excluded yeah. from just from the casino. Or? Just from the casino, okay. yeah. Because mainly our Chinese clients they self-exclude from okay. the casino. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then how big are the groups? Because I don't know that you mentioned. Oh no. Before. Yeah, the group can be as small as two. Okay. Yeah, even with two, they find that it's effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have um, the maximum that we had was uh, I think seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually put it you know maximum of eight in order to keep the dynamic. And yeah. they're all Chinese speakers? All Chinese speakers. Okay, and do they all speak Mandarin together? Or because I know there's many different... Yeah, so uh, for those who cannot speak, ma uh, speak Mandarin, they, uh, at least they must be able to understand. Okay. But sometimes we do some a little bit translation here and there because we want the group to have a very cohesive kind of like, you know, right. atmosphere and dynamics. And then what's the process after they complete this? Mm -hmm. Treatment. Okay, um, for PGF, we have standard follow-up. So the three months, six months, and the one-year follow-up. Okay. And in fact, a lot of my clients, one of them, uh, when I caught her, she's one that didn't want to participate. She threw the color pencil <laughs> or threw the crayon when we asked her to draw. Yeah, she was good. But when I caught her for the follow-up, she said that, oh, now she's very conscious. When she goes to casino, she's able to leave the table. In the past, she couldn't even leave the table. Another story is that this guy, he said that, okay, now he's very aware the harm of gambling. And if he sees, uh, the next time if he goes to get a casino, if he loses any money, he's going to self-exclude totally and not going back. Mm -hmm. And he did. Yeah. In the past, it took him 80,000 to self-exclude. But the last time was 5,000 and he self-exclude and he didn't want to go in anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's interesting to me, and, and I'm not a therapist, and so I don't have mm. a lot of experience with you know, face to face dealing with problem gamblers, but um, I know there's some, there's some uh, not very recent research looking at um, people who attend one or two Gamblers Anonymous meetings mm. but then don't go back. Mm. And in fact, what they found was that um, even just one or two meetings, you know, without a long-term engagement could be very effective for someone, you know, to sort of think about their circumstances and then to make changes that, that are self-initiated changes. Um, and this sounds like it's quite a bit more structured and it's yeah. for, you know, uh, people who have already gone through, you know, enough difficulties with their gambling that, that they have self-excluded. But it sounds like a very nice sort of structured brief intervention mm. um, in a way to, to kind of keep people on that path That's right. to change. Yeah. 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 At the end of the session, the uh, program, we actually encourage them that if they still meet some problem, they can come back for counselling. Mm -hmm. Because um, gambling, problem gambling is actually just the surface. It mm -hmm. may be caused by some other deep, deeper issues, mm -hmm. which counselling is required. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you involve um, family? No. No. So these are the ones that have excluded and now want to get back into yes. the casino in order to get their exclusion. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So they are intending to go back and gamble. They are intending to go back. Yeah. So for us, it's reduce the harm and how you know is probably just helping them to know the awareness when to stop. Yeah. <laughs> when to take the next exclusion or when to come back. Yeah. I imagine in Singapore this would be very interesting to implement because of the. Um, the, the sort of special barriers, the additional barriers that they have in place for Singapore citizens to mm. go to the casino. Mm. Um, but then, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. As far as I know, because they only have three hours mm -hmm. yeah, of counseling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and. Oh, in Singapore. In Singapore. Yeah. And most of it is done one to one. Yeah. Okay. So, this is my first um, pilot pro uh, 
project actually with AFS, encouraged by all thanks to my <laughs> my boss, my bosses, <laughs> and my team leader actually encouraged me to actually to put something in structure and to carry out. And we, yeah, yeah, and we reintroduced that, and then probably we can get some income for PGF. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.